Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us uh, here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you. We want to begin with prayer. Um, there is so much. Um, there's just there's just much to pray for and many to pray for. We want to pray for the condition and the direction of our nation. We also want to pray for our local community and region. We want to remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church members in particular, and lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special unspoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, praise you, and worship you. We thank you for your incredible, glorious presence. Father, we pray for the condition and the direction of our nation and our world. We pray for a genuine Holy Ghost revival. We pray for the influence of the people of God, the Word of God, and the Spirit of God upon our world and our nation. We also pray for our local community and region. We pray that you'll continue to open up doors of utterance and influence. We pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church members in particular. Pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out your divine favor on your people here at Cornerstone. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray that you provide each and every one of them with a hedge of protection. We ask it all in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said amen. Um, I've really been thinking about this. I get up early in the morning, start praying and meditating about these devotionals because we want to give something that is fitly spoken, something that's relevant and right and from God. And I just have one little phrase in a verse in a very small psalm. Psalm 23, uh, the most quoted psalm of them all. And I want to go um, I want to go to one verse of Psalm 23, and that is verse number four. Psalm 23, and verse number four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And I want to just simply entitle this, All I Really Need. All I Really Need. Um, there's a lot I could say about this because we are living in a nation where you can walk into any grocery store anywhere. You can drive through any sizable town or city and see four or five different gas stations. Um, you can go to any type of a convenience store and see assorted candies and drinks and even water. You can go to a grocery store and find all kinds of different choices. My point being, we are blessed from the perspective that we have so much to choose from. We really do. We are a blessed people. And when I look more specifically in the scriptures, I'm reminded of Acts chapter number three. <clears throat> Excuse me. Peter and John are going up at the hour to pray. And there at the gate, beautiful, there is a man lame. He is carried there daily with his little tinkling cup looking for somebody to feel pity for him so that he can be fed and taken care of by his handlers. And you know the story, a beautiful story about uh, Peter fastens his eyes on him and says, look on me. And 
silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. Lifted the man up, the man sprang up, there was healing in his legs, healing in his ankle bones, and walking and leaping and praising God in the temple for the very first time. Amazing story. But that is a beautiful illustration how you have two different worlds. You have the world of need and you have the world of want. And here, this man um, looking on Peter, thinking he's gonna receive something from him. And so Peter's perspective is, I have what you need. The man with the tinkling cup is saying, you have something that I want. And this is really where the church is and where the world is. The world is pursuing what they want and the church is pursuing the world to give them what they need. But although that that's just one illustration because it reveals the choice of man. He's only got one perspective. He doesn't have that supernatural insight and revelation and comprehension of really what he needs. But I want to tell you that I have lived for God long enough and you have lived for God long enough that we have been able for many, many years been able to determine the distinction between what I want and what I need. And I love this verse of scripture because it brings it all down for me. And that is, thou art with me. Life is going to have its trials. Life is going to have its valley here, the valley of the shadow of death. It was, it was a real place. It was not just a figment, a parabolic figment or a typology, it was a reality. There was really a place called the Valley of the Shadow of Death. And there are gonna be valleys, there are gonna be trials, there's gonna be unexpected tragedies, there are going to be, there's gonna be blessings, there's going to be answers to prayer, there's going to be supernatural, there's gonna be revival, personal and, and corporate, there's going to be great things that happen in the spirit. But life, life, life also deals us. Those hands of the unpredictable, the unsuspecting trial, the situation, the, the thing that, that, that we're having to endure. I've got good news for you because those are the kinds of things, those are the types of experiences that help us to winnow and to separate the wants from the needs. And after you have lived life in Jesus, as long as you have, you have already come to the conclusion that all I really need is to know that thou art with me. Whether it's blessing, whether it's trial, whether it's struggle, whether it's stress, whether it's being blessed, whether it's being humbled or being abased or exalted, whatever the case may be, all of the dynamical experiences that go on in individual lives on a day-to-day -day basis, there's one thing I know that I need above all else. For thou art with me. And this psalm, this is actually the fulcrum of that psalm. If you were to, if you were to extract that incredible, wonderful, supernatural phraseology for thou art with me, if you were to extract that out of this, the most often quoted psalm in the Bible, 
it would change dramatically. Because here you have an individual that's saying, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's funny because I'm going through this and I am afraid, or I'm experiencing this and I am worried, or I am going through this and I am struggling with doubt, or I am going through this and I'm asking God why, yada, yada, yada. All of us can fill in that blank. But this one phrase, rescues, it rescues the reader. It rescues those that are in the valley that I have what I need. For thou art with me. My brothers and my sisters, if you know that, you are a incredibly blessed person. Well, pastor, I don't, I don't feel God. Listen, we don't walk by feelings. You already know that. And I will never forget the very first time I came to church as a new convert and I did not feel the joy. I did not feel the exhilaration. I did not feel the acceleration. I did not feel anything. God had not abandoned me, but God was training me. God was teaching me that we have to learn to live by principle. And the principle is, this is where I am. This is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm experiencing. But I got what I need for thou art with me. I trust this has been a blessing to you. I have a feeling that there's somebody out there that this is, this is exactly what you needed. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.